19 COVID stories. The return to school, March 2021. Tom walked ahead of the flock of small children, chattering excitedly like starlings behind him. En route to the reopened primary school, it was important to maintain the regulated social distance between himself and his charges. On hearing the music, coming from the speaker held under Tom's arm, more children rushed out of their houses and tagged along, following the meandering route through the village towards the school, a converted vicarage next to the restored Norman church, from which the village took its unique name, Eglise St. Peter. This communal early morning walk to school had started quite by accident a year earlier. A musical composer for children's television programmes, Tom worked at home in his converted loft. One morning, after his wife had driven to the comprehensive school in the local town where she taught English and history, Tom, as a prelude to his own working day, had been putting out the bins at the front of their terraced house. A neighbour, with whom they were on friendly terms, had approached him. Visibly agitated, she asked if he could possibly walk her four-year-old daughter to primary school. A single mother, she had to stay at home to receive the delivery of a much-needed washing machine and then drive straight to work. Tom duly obliged, afterwards getting back to his own working day. A week later, the request was repeated. At this time, the crisis involving the transportation of a geriatric mother to a doctor's appointment. A further crisis had not been needed to repeat the arrangement because Tom had simply made the offer himself. Far from being a burden, he had found that his new early morning chore, a stroll through the village, chatting with a delightful young child, provided the perfect overture to writing music for a children's television programme. It being a closely knit community, word had soon gotten around that if you were stuck with the school run, then Tom was your man. This tip usually accompanied by Tom's mobile number. Before long, Tom had become an unofficial service for overstretched parents, each morning collecting more and more children and enjoying enormously the constant renavigation of his route through the village, which these constant additions necessitated. The calls began coming not just from the middle-class enclave at the hub of the village, but also from the estate on its outskirts. Jane and Robert were soon walking alongside Rashmia and Nurie. When Martin Luther King talked of his dream, a white and black child walking hand in hand to school, he could well have been describing the flock of children making their way each morning through the sleepy village of Eccles St. Peter. With such an arrangement, Tom's responsibilities had inevitably multiplied. Each morning, little fists had held out hastily written notes. Brian is ill. Chantal will be late. Lunch money and bits of PE kit that Tom had handed on to the waiting teacher. The outbreak of the virus, whilst being a world catastrophe, also meant the cessation of Tom's new, unofficial position at the school. It was also the first time in years that he and his wife had spent day after day alone together at home. They both worked full-time, and careful planning had ensured that school holidays were always busy with walks in the Dolomite Mountains, painting in the Tuscan Hills, museum tours in Prague. Whilst it was a loving, still sexually active marriage, a deep seam of sadness ran through it, not to mention a cruel and unjust irony. They both worked in and enjoyed the world of children, but were unable to have any of their own. The years of trying, an ever more desperate yet ultimately futile journey, had left a small, dark, locked room in the centre of their relationship. Eventually, they embraced the alternative, but had left it too late, and on applying, were deemed too old to adopt. To mark the end of lockdown and the first day back at school, Tom had composed something special in his home studio. A musical accompaniment for the children's walk to school. The walking to school song had been downloaded onto his iPhone and was now playing loudly through the Bluetooth loudspeaker he held under his arm. 
On hearing the music, passed their front doors. Excited children grabbed their school things and rushed out to join the flock. There had never been so many children accompanying him. That morning, Tom was more popular than an ice cream van. As they neared the school, Tom saw a Volvo estate parked in front of the iron railings. Standing next to it were Mr. and Mrs. Sterling, joint chairpersons of the Eccles St. Peter Village Town Council. Tom instinctively switched off the music. This drew the attention of the children from their chit chat onto the stern, well groomed couple standing in front of them. What do you think you're doing? Mrs. Sterling was wringing her hands in outrage. I'm walking the children to school, as I always do. Have you lost your mind? Looking like an old angry owl, Mrs. Blake, the headmistress, had suddenly appeared behind the railings. Before Tom could answer, Mr. Sterling swooped in. We're in the middle of an epidemic, for God's sake. You can't just crowd all these children together. This prompted the two women to shriek one after the other. Don't you know how reckless and dangerous that is? It's completely irresponsible. Faced with this swarm of indignation, Tom was rendered speechless. He wanted to say that he had walked ahead of the children, respecting social distancing regulations, that all the scientific and statistical evidence demonstrated that healthy younger children showed only mild symptoms, and that the children themselves were frightened and confused by the crisis, only vaguely understanding it. He had wanted to nurture their need not just for a return to normality, but a celebration of it. Yet Tom said none of this, allowing Mrs. Blake to crow airily. Anyway, your walking the children to school was at most an informal arrangement. It was then that Mrs. Sterling cooed her particularly poisonous insinuation. You don't have children yourself, do you, Mr. Hamlin? Tell me, what exactly is your interest in these children? The acrid implication hung in the air. Tom felt the bile burn inside him. He had to swallow down hard while scrambling around in his head for exactly the correct response. Not outrage. Something calm. Something dignified. But he took too long. And Mrs. Blake closed down the conversation. I and my staff will take over from here. Go home, Mr. Hamlin. Tom turned and walked through the throng of little upturned faces, none of them fully comprehending the situation, but vaguely aware that Mr. Hamlin had done something wrong and was being told off. It is perhaps surprising that early the next day, the newly composed song, the walking to school song, could be heard once again, winding its way through the village. As on the previous morning, the children ran out into the street, their parents not having yet received the official letter cancelling and forbidding the communal walk to school. The children skipped, laughed and sang along to the music, coming from the box held under the school walker's arm. But on this particular sunny morning, he didn't lead them to the primary school. Instead, after circling the estate, they were led out of the village and into the surrounding hills, where Mrs. Hamlin stood by a large oak, waiting to take them all under her wing.